Folks, I want to thank you for taking time today to stop by. I have a really cool product I want to tell you about. This is one of our own creations. It's probably been the most complex product. And in fact, only one version of it is available. We're still working on the other version, fine tuning it. They say perfection is the enemy of good. And well, <laughs> I'm kind of treading that line pretty good. But um, this is the John Deere Quick Attach version of our GWT, which stands for Good Works Tractors, VersaForks, all right? And you may think, Hell, forks have been around forever, right? Well, these are totally different. I want to take you through that today because we have a lot of folks already buying just these frames using their existing forks and getting these. A lot of other folks are making the good decision to buy the Versa forks instead of getting a regular set of pallet forks because that's just boring. Okay, so let's tell you more about it, all right? And a lot of good customer feedback over the over the months, I guess maybe maybe a year or so too, just um, ideas to include. And there's some certain things we didn't include either, and I'll, and I'll get to that as well. Um, but these are more than pallet forks, all right? And I've got the tines off of here now just to make it easier to see that the pallet fork tines themselves are, they're your standard pallet fork tines. So nothing novel about those. But what we have going on, all right, are gonna be, first of all, this is all made in America, steel, and labor. Right in Iowa is where these are made um, from our fabricator that, that produces our stump wreckers for us, our Versa brackets, our hitch hangers, our Versa forks. We're actually working on a snow pusher, first time I've told anybody this, working on a snow pusher slash bucket kind of combination tool. All right, so having a lot more stuff in the pipeline. It takes a while, development takes a while. So two inch receiver on here, all right. A lot of folks clamor for that. There is a uh, a cheap Chinese manufacturer out there that makes a setup like this with a receiver on there. I thought it was a really good idea. Of course, it could be a pain if you have your pallet fork tines on here, but you can take the tines on and off. I'll show you how to do that too. That's what this cutout is for, all right? You drop the, the tine down on top and then just kind of rock it back into this groove and then you can slide it to, to the left or to the right. That's a very common setup for how pallet forks are put together. You get the frame and then you have two tines and that's how they go on. So. Right and left of that two inch receiver tube, you're gonna see chain hooks, all right? Something to grab onto, chain logs away, or maybe a, a stump or some other big load that you wanna haul along right around there. And then up top, well, this is gonna serve a couple of purposes, this, this area right here. Number one, you're gonna have your holes for your top link because this mounts to your three point hitch as well. You can mount this on the front end loader or the three point hitch. Nothing else like that on the market. But on top, you've got a hole right here so that you can mount a ball for a gooseneck trailer mover as well. So you have your two inch receiver down below, mount a ball here for your gooseneck as well. The last thing that I wanted to integrate is a way to get additional ballast weight, all right? So whether it's on the front end loader or the three point hitch, having a way to add additional weight there. So that's what this top rail is, is a a way to hold suitcase weights on there. So we already sell our Versa bracket and our hitch hangers. We're big proponents of safety around here. Most tractors are too light and tippy. So add a lot of ballast weight to stabilize your machine, typically when you're using the front end loader. But if you have a heavy tool on the back, we just showed a video actually just the other day of a tractor tipping backwards. A, a gentleman had a backhoe on the back of this tractor. He took his loader off because he was gonna put a plow on the front and went down a little bit of a ramp Tractor started tipping backwards. Point being, safety first. So that's why we have an integrated weight rail to hang suitcase weights on there too. All right, so I moved one of these parking stands down and we have the other one in the storage position here. Now these fit just nice and tight right inside the frame, all right? And the, the foot kind of just sits underneath here. Why do we need parking stands on there? Well, as part of the development process, we found that when your, your pallet forks are just resting on the ground, most three point hitches don't go down that low, right? If this is the ground that they're resting on, you can see the lower point for the lower link. And a lot of three point hitches just don't go that close to the ground, all right? I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone here. We've, I've, I've set different attachments at different times on the ground and well, the three point doesn't go low enough to drop them down. You gotta set them on, on a pallet or up on blocks or something else. So we had to find a solution to work around that. And the problem is compounded a little bit more by, well, maybe an extra couple of inches or so if you have a quick hitch, because you have a hook on your quick hitch that then needs to get down underneath here to be able to then pick it up, okay? So we had to come up with a solution there. So if you're using it with your three point, you just hop off. And, you know, I thought this was an inconvenience, but then I thought, 
tools like rear blades, flail mowers, landscape rakes, the list goes on. There's a lot of other tractor tools that have parking stands of some kind. So it's the same kind of concept um, where you're just putting your parking stands down, put them in place, and then this gets, you can see this becomes the ground level now and you can see how much higher these, uh, these pins are for your three point. So it's a lot better that way. Um, it took some thought. We thought about doing some outside stands here that maybe rotated down other things, but wanted to keep everything inside the footprint uh, and keep it with the pallet forks too. So um, I will back up though and say we are always uh, with any of our products looking for improvements along the way, right? So maybe what you see now, if you're watching this video a year, five years, 10 years from now, doesn't mean that this is the exact same product or very well maybe tweaks right as we go along as we get additional customer feedback maybe as we um you know an idea pops into our head whatever it might be there could still be design tweaks that come down the road and improve and and make the product even better we are proud to be sponsored by rimguard solutions a liquid ballast weight it goes right inside your tires completely hidden not only is it going to help with safety keeping those rear tires planted on the ground it helps with loader efficiency and traction too the benefits of rimguard include being the heaviest all-natural liquid ballast weight on the market it's not going to corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride it's not going to freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com okay so one question for you folks and this is something that i've been kind of back and forth on myself so we're, we're these are rated for 2,000 pound forks all right but they're we engineered it in a way to make it still pretty lightweight um, most 2,000 pound fork frames are going to be in the well with like 48 inch tines about 350 pounds all right these weigh about 270 ish pounds with 48 inch tines maybe 260 depends we're going to have the john deere quick attach version and the skid steer quick attach version so there's just a slight weight difference depending on the quick attach bracketry that's on there i say all that because you'll notice there's no tall headache rack up here okay there's your pallet forks come down and the bottom of the fork is here all right it doesn't mean that there's not a back on your pallet forks this whole section here is still a back all right it's a place for your load to rest against everything right in here your load can rest against that against that the tines come up and everything else a way to keep the weight down was to get rid of a taller headache rack on here. So the thought is that we may come out with a bolt-on version of a headache rack, you know, potentially something that maybe you drill out and bolt on here and come across and it goes over and then comes down the other side to give you maybe an extra foot or 18 inches of backstop here, right? But most loads, if you're holding a log, is going to be down here and it would be a very stupid practice to raise that load way up here and rock your forks back. I don't care how tall your headache rack is. That's just asking to have a log come back and crush you on your operator seat. I'm going to take a second here and, and talk about how you transport, how you move with your loader, whether it's a bucket or pallet forks or a grapple, but always hold your load as low to the ground as you can, right? Get it up high enough off the ground so you're not skipping and bobbing and snagging things on there, and that's as high as you need to be. Then when you're moving it onto a trailer or stacking it, only go as high as you need to go. Not while you're turning your wheels and your machine's in a very awkward position. That's when side rollovers happen, all right? And then get that load back down low as quick as you can. Again, all the balance way in the backside, that's why you need it, to offset this. But just don't go driving around because you get one little rut. One wheel goes in a rut. If you had that load up here, your whole tractor's tipping over. It happens in the blink of the eye. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Okay, back on track. So let me know what you think about this headache rack. Okay, I'm up in the air, may come out with one. It, it would be beneficial for, it would be fine, okay, for tractors that are, have a larger lift capacity, you know, like a John Deere 3 Series, like a, not a 3E, but like a 3R Series or a Kubota um, L3560 or bigger, you know, uh, the Coyote DK tractors and bigger where, I don't know, you had an extra... 40 pounds, 30, 40, 50 pounds at most for something substantial up here, it's not going to be very detrimental. But on small tractors, you know, you want to, you want to keep it light. Otherwise, you're eating up into too much lift capacity. On a, on a little 1025R like this, 750, 800 pounds of lift capacity, you know, these pallet forks with the tines weigh a little bit more than a bucket, not a whole lot more, but they're generally keeping the load closer to the loader, which offsets that. Um, it gets you more capacity when you're lifting close to the loader base than further out.
could use a little grease on there. So, so some of these uh, side lengths will have grease zerks. The 1025R does not. You get to the bigger tractors and these side links have handles on them and grease zerks and all that. Make it nicer and easier. But you know what the nicest thing is? Our hydraulic top links and hydraulic side links, otherwise known as a top and tilt kit. Speaking of which, like three days ago, Summit Hydraulics actually released their hydraulic top and tilt kits. Those are available. They're in stock now. They sell the third function kits. They sell the hydraulic multipliers, all that stuff we've shown you. How's that look? Pretty level yet or no? So yeah, so now you can get not only those third functions and multipliers, but a top and tilt kit too, all from Summit Hydraulics. Say 5% code GWT. They have been a good partner. They sell quality products too. Probably need to shorten that top link a bit. Just like any tool on the three point, kind of got to adjust it as needed. The Easy Wheel, another GWT partner, does make that easier though, I'll tell you that. So now you can store these in the storage position. Okay, so here's a look with them mounted on the three-point hitch, all right? Now, you don't have to use a quick hitch. You can mount it right directly to your three-point hitch if you want. Um, so that's totally optional. This red piece of steel in the middle is totally optional, not required. Um, but yeah, I mean, JDQA brackets on here, three-point brackets on here. It just took a lot of, it just took a lot of prototypes. I probably did more prototypes of this model than any other to try to nail the design and, and uh, make it all work. So again, Two inch receiver, chain hooks, quick hitch compatible, gooseneck mover up here as well. A lot of flexibility. That's kind of the idea between the Versa bracket, you know, Versa forks, that Versa bucket, long ways off in the future, not even a prototype yet. So the thought being, say you want to carry a pallet of stuff along with you, or stack up a bunch of tools, whatever the heck it is, you can carry more stuff along with you in the field. Say you have your bucket or a grapple on the front, and you have another way to carry things along. I mean, it's, it's so often that I want to carry and haul more stuff with me. So another way to do that. And if you're going to spend the money on a set of pallet forks, why would you not spend the money and get the most versatile set of pallet forks that you can? Hence the Versa forks. Another reason you may consider three point mounted forks. Maybe you don't have a front end loader right now. You're going to get one in the future. Well, this could be an option for you the time being. And then you still have the, the JDQA or in the not too distant future from now, the SSQA version. So when you add on a loader, Maybe you have a pin bucket and you can't get forks on the loader right now. You want to down the road, you have a three point version at this time. Or if you have a smaller tractor, like a 1025R, Kubota BX, some other, some other subcompact or small compact that you just can't lift a lot with the, with the loader. You can lift a lot more, generally speaking, with your three point hitch. There's still a 2000 pound weight rating on here right now. How they rate forks, okay, what the heck does 2,000 pounds even mean? So they're gonna have a load center, okay? Um, and that means it's gonna be generally, depends on the forks and the company you're working with, but 21 inches or 24 inches of a load center, all right? So that means this is the base, you go 21 or 24 inches out, and that's where they're measuring that 2,000 pound rating, all right? So to work against that, the further out your load is, the less weight <laughs> your tractor is gonna lift up, all right? The closer to the base, whether it's a three point or the loader, you're gonna lift more weight. The further away, the less you're gonna lift. So anyway, a lot of dynamics come into play. It's good to be aware of that stuff. Anytime you're using a tractor, especially with pallet forks, grapple bucket, all that kind of thing where you can lift a load in the air, go slow. Lift it slow, move slow. Slow is how you win. <laughs> so anyway, goodworkstractors.com is where you can get these. We sell and ship them all over the country. Every day of the week, that's all we do is we sell and ship products. So we're happy to help you out. If you're not sure what ones to get or 
Maybe you're looking for another tool. Maybe you need a grapple or a snow pusher or a box blade or a land plane or a rototiller. Doesn't matter what it is. I'm sure we can help you out. Send us your tractor and making your model. Give us an idea of your project that you're looking to tackle. We'll help you out. We'll give you some options, let you know what the best tool is to fit your needs, and we'll ship it right to you. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.